Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today has been roads, transportation systems. Sometimes you have setbacks because of avalanches and major catastrophes, but usually the problems counties encounter the day-to-day -day use and the heavy use of roads. So what happens when you have trouble paying for or having the funding for the maintenance of roads? That's our topic today. Joining us uh, from Tooele County, the uh, director of the road department, Rodney Thompson, Sidney Hollinger from Broken Arrow, Inc., a user of county roads in Tooele County, and Commissioner Jerry Hurst from the Tooele County Commission. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, so what's happening, Rod? out in Tooele County. What, why, is, why is this such a problem that, uh, that makes that wheel squeak a little bit? Basically this road that we're talking about is uh, Stansbury Island Road is about a seven mile section of the total Stansbury Island Road and mm -hmm. over the last 10 years it's exceeded its capacity t for truck traffic based on the fact that there's a lot of heavy truck traffic hauling salt and basically fertilizer, potash, aggregate, landscape rocks, and we have issues with maintenance on that road. Well, w when you're looking at the budget, Jerry, what does it cost to maintain this currently? Well, uh, typically we grade roads a couple of times a year. This one we're grading like 10 times a year, so you add up the fuel and that kind of thing, and so it's substantial. And we're still not doing it justice because these uh, companies, like Sid's company, they're, they're calling us all the time saying, man, this road's in bad shape. Can you get on it? And, uh, and they've stepped up to the plate, actually, and brought their graders in, and they're doing quite a bit of grading to help with that problem. But the, you know, the solution is not just grading the road. We've got to do more. We've got, to, we've got to pave the road to make it adequate for these big trucks. But that's, that's long term. In, in the meantime, aren't there revenues? I mean, everybody assumes there's fuel tax, okay? So, you know, that's supposed to be a massive fund that the state generates in fuel tax. Counties are supposed to get part of it. Isn't that covering it? Well, uh, a lot of that fuel tax goes to the state for the state highway systems. We get about 25% of that that's split up amongst the 29 counties. And uh, it's not even covering maintenance, let alone building new roads. Uh, you know, we'd like to be uh, chip sealing our roads, for example, every five years. We're on a seven-year rotation now because we just can't keep up with maintenance. So now when we talk about building new roads, there's just not the revenue for that, just not the funding. Well, so Sid, does it really have that much of an impact uh, on your equipment if the road gets a little bit ruddy? I mean, I thought those trucks were big. They're big. <laughs> and they haul heavy loads, but uh, when a road when a road becomes very washboardy, it just shakes the trucks essentially shakes them to pieces. And uh, the worst, uh, once it starts, the only way to solve the problem with the rutting of the roads is to grade it, grade those ruts out. And uh, as you said, this this year has been particularly intense. There's there's going to be easily fifty thousand loads go over that road this year, forty ton loads. And uh, it isn't just going out loaded, it's coming back empty with the trucks bouncing. Oh, I guess empty. that would. So yeah. both of them have an impact and, uh, and of course the uh, industry, we've stepped up, we've, we, we have complained a lot to the county, <laughs> uh, but we also realize... You're saying Jerry doesn't take your phone calls anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad we have a call, call waiting now, call answering. <laughs> but no, they're pretty good about talking to us and, and do the best they can, but we've realized that we, we had to step up and all the, the industries, uh, there's four or five major companies out there that's moving material over that road. Uh, and it is also used very heavily by the public. Yeah, I've actually been out there recreationally a couple the, of times. So there, there's, a, there's a BLM bike trail that the public uses and there's also some, some camping and some, an interpretive site out the end of the island. And, so it, it's heavily used by the public, but the most intense use is by, by the by uh, the Broken Arrow, who does salt, uh, GSL industry, who has bought a significant amount of potassium chloride from uh, Magnesium Corporation of America, U.S. Magnesium, well, not Mag Mag U.S. Magnesium. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will get into some of the solutions and some of the uh, directions that we may go. 
and, and see what the county is doing to correct the problem. Stay with us, we'll be right back on the county seat. How would you spend an extra day in Utah Valley? Stay one more day. Visit utahvalley.com to make reservations. Utah Valley, bring everyone together. Let's be honest, you don't know much about Beaver County. Well, let me tell you about it. It's the birthplace of outlaw Butch Cassidy and inventor Philo T. Farnsworth. Some of the best skiing in Utah is at Eagle Point. You've got camping, Canyon Breeze Golf Course, Crusher and the Tushers, Beaver Territorial Courthouse, Snowmobiling, Renewable Energy, Pioneer Car Show, Squeaky Cheese, Ghost Towns to Explore, Best Water in the Country, Paiute ATV Trails, Old Frisco Kilns, Horse Racing, Hunting, Fishing, and it's a good place to live. Beaver County, mountains of fun. I could tell you more, but why don't you come and see it for yourself? The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. CITLA manages 3.5 million acres of Utah lands with the express purpose of furthering the education of Utah students while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, we distributed more than $22 million to Utah schools last year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund.